When people hear the last name McCaffrey, they probably think one of two things. They think about the NFL superstar of Christian McCaffrey, who was a dominant player for Stanford, the Panthers, and now the 49ers, or they likely think about Dylan McCaffrey, who was a quarterback bust who played for Michigan. At one point, Dylan was a five-star player and was considered the future of Michigan football. Unfortunately, he would end up flaming out, and it looked like his other brother Luke would also follow the same path. He was also a big-time quarterback recruit, but after flaming out at both Louisville and Nebraska, he ended up at Rice, where he actually saved his career. He switched to the wide receiver spot, and now ended up getting drafted by the Washington Commanders and has a real future in the NFL. Will he be as good as Christian? Probably not. But in today's video, I want to tell you how Luke McCaffrey saved his career. We're going to talk about how he became a big-time player to begin with, his three pit stops in college football, and the impact he could have for the Washington Commanders. But before we get started, if you're a big fan of college football, be sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like if you didn't support today's video, and let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I can cover next. Now let's get started and talk about Luke McCaffrey. So in order to understand how McCaffrey got to this point, we first need to go back in time. He was born in Highlands Ranch, Colorado in 2001 to former Denver Broncos wide receiver Ed McCaffrey. His mom Lisa also played college soccer, and many of you guys know the McCaffrey family is a football family. His three older brothers all ended up playing college football, as there was Christian, Dylan, and Max. Christian is currently a starting running back for the San Francisco 49ers. Dylan played for Northern Colorado, and I don't know what Max is doing now, but obviously sports, especially football, were huge in the McCaffrey house growing up. He ended up growing up in Castle Rock with the rest of his family and would eventually attend Valor Christian High School. While he was there, Luke played quarterback, running back, receiver, safety, corner, and also returned both punts and kicks for Valor Christian. He didn't end up making the varsity roster until his sophomore year at Valor, but when he did, he was all over the field. As a sophomore in 2016, he had 47 catches for 717 yards and 9 touchdowns. He also ran the ball 23 times for 245 yards and two scores, and was 5 of 7 of passing for 63 yards. On defense, he also had 42 tackles and two picks, and then the team ended up going 11-3 and, and won a state title. He was already attracting attention from big-time colleges, though his first major offer would come from Colorado during the 2016 season. After that, Michigan, Duke, Colorado State, Washington, and even Ohio State came in the offseason afterwards, and his brother Dylan had already committed to Michigan by that point. There were some that thought he'd go to Ohio State to be on the other side of that great rivalry, but that would not end up happening. During his junior year in 2017, Luke split time with Blake Stenstrom, who ended up at Colorado, and threw for 878 yards, 6 touchdowns, and 3 interceptions, while completing more than 76% of his passes. As a receiver, he put up 147 receiving yards, and Valor Christian ended the season at 11-1, and, and he was listed as a first-team All-Colorado choice at quarterback. This was picked by both the coaches and the press, and he was a first-team All-State pick by the Denver Post as an athlete. At this point, his recruitment had absolutely blown up, as he had visited Ohio State, Michigan, UCLA, and Nebraska, and even though he hadn't really played a full season of starting quarterback, teams were just interested in his ability to play football across the board, and felt like he could develop into a great quarterback at some point. But it was Nebraska that really liked him. In June of 2018, before his senior season, Luke decided he would commit to Scott Frost and the Cornhuskers. He said, quote, A few weeks ago, I really knew that Nebraska was the place for me. My parents encouraged me to look at all the options and make sure I'm 100% committed. I have no doubt going into the future, and there's no turning back. The last few weeks have really let me know that Nebraska is the place. During his senior year in 2018, his father Ed became the head coach at Valor Christian, and Luke became the full-time starter at quarterback. He ended up passing for 2,202 yards with 21 touchdowns and 4 interceptions, and also ran for 526 yards and 8 scores on the ground as they went 14-0 and won the Class 5A state championship. By the time he graduated high school, Luke was considered a 3-star recruit as an athlete, the number 2 recruit in the state of Colorado, and the 29th best athlete recruit in the class of 2019. 24-7 Sports listed him as a 4-star recruit, and he decided to graduate early from high school and enroll at Nebraska in time for spring workouts. So, how did the fourth McCaffrey brother end up doing in Lincoln, Nebraska? Well, let's take a look. So when Luke arrived at Nebraska in 2019, he sat behind both Adrian Martinez and Noah Vedrill. Head coach Scott Frost said before the 2019 season that the plan was for Luke to start playing quarterback and developing there, and they were not going to put him in other positions like he did in high school. They wanted him to be the team's starting quarterback of the future, and they didn't want to risk anything happening to him. Surprisingly, though, Luke was right on Adrian's level, and the Cornhuskers ended up going with Adrian based solely on the fact that he was older and knew the system better. A lot of people said that Luke and him fought neck and neck, but I don't know how much I actually believe that one. 
Adrian Martinez was considered a Heisman contender going into 2019, and there's no way as a true freshman that Luke McCaffrey was playing that good. Maybe I'm wrong, though. That didn't mean, though, he didn't get on the field at times in 2019, but he did not get his first significant playing time until Week 8 against Indiana. Adrian had been struggling a bit, and with bad games against Ohio State and Northwestern, Coach Frost turned to Luke to give the team a spark at quarterback after both Adrian and Noah were polled. He ended up rushing for 76 yards and 12 carries, and completed 5 of 6 passes for 71 yards and a touchdown. He was able to stay under 4 games and keep his redshirt, and finish his true freshman season with 142 passing yards and 2 passing touchdowns, as well as 166 rushing yards and a touchdown and 1 catch. That was a lot. Nebraska ended up going 5-7 and seven and missed out on the bowl game, so Luke would not have another chance at playing any time the rest of the year. Going into 2020, it was once again a battle with Luke and Adrian, but Frost decided to go with Martinez once again. Luke would remain the backup until week four against Penn State, when he made his first career start due to once again struggles from Adrian Martinez at quarterback. He was the team's leading passer and rusher, throwing for 152 yards, a touchdown, and an interception, and he also added 67 yards and a touchdown on the ground, as Nebraska actually beat Penn State. His energy was a huge part of his success in Nebraska, with their center Cam Jurgens saying, quote, Luke has always got an insane amount of energy, he's always bouncing around, and I think some people feed off his energy. The following week against Illinois, though, he ended up throwing for three interceptions and was benched for Adrian Martinez after that. He didn't start again for the remainder of the season and finished 2020 with 466 passing yards, one touchdown, and six interceptions. He did end up having nearly 400 yards and three touchdowns on the ground, but my goodness, he turned the ball over and it was absolutely ugly for him. With Adrian Martinez coming back in 2021, it felt like Luke had lost his place in the quarterback room, so he eventually decided to enter the transfer portal and make use of all the new transfer and NIL rules. He'd hopefully find somewhere he could play immediately, and the Nebraska era was now over. So, where was Luke McCaffrey going to go? Well, at first he committed to play for Louisville, but eventually after a couple of months, he'd hop back into the portal once again and ended up in Houston for the start of the 2021 season. No, not the Cougars, but instead the Rice Owls, who are a part of Conference USA. They have kind of fallen on hard times, and later he would not be the only journeyman big-time quarterback to end up there as JT Daniels came in for the 2023 season. Why did Luke McCaffrey decide to go to Rice? Well, it's because their head coach, Mike Bloomgren, had a good relationship with the McCaffrey family, and he knew Luke since he was 9 years old, and he coached Christian at Stanford. Coach Bloomgren said, quote, When it's somebody who has the character of Luke, that's what really excites me. It fits so well with what we've built here, and that's a very talented individual who has been successful on a big stage coming to our program, so our guys are very excited, as am I, to have them. Sadly, he didn't outright win the starting job in camp, as he battled with Wiley Green for that position, but he did get on the field significantly more than he did in Lincoln. He played in nine games, starting three of them, finishing the season with 313 yards, two touchdowns, and four interceptions on a 50% completion percentage. On the ground, he ran the football 41 times for 132 yards and two touchdowns, and Rice would go 4-8 and eight and miss a bowl game. By this point, he'd struggled consistently at quarterback, so he decided to make a move that would switch and change his whole career. He had thrown for just 921 yards and 10 picks in the entirety of his career, so it looked like he was better running the ball in his hands, so he decided to make the tough decision to play wide receiver. If you remember back in time, he actually played receiver in high school, and after switching, he said, quote, One thing that I'm super thankful for about Coach Bloom is that he's really left the decision to me. They never pressured me into switching positions, and I just felt like where I was at in my career and what I wanted, it was best for me to switch. To make that transition, it's been an awesome decision, and the way it was done through Coach Bloom is something I'm so thankful for. In his one season as a full-time receiver, he was actually the Owls' leading player. He caught 58 passes for 723 yards and 6 touchdowns, and then on the ground as a rusher, he added 148 yards and a touchdown. Rice ended up going 5-7 with JT Daniels as the quarterback, but actually made a bowl game due to some interesting NCAA rules. There are too many bowls that didn't have a team in them, but they ended up qualifying for it and then lost in the Lending Tree Bowl to Ole Miss, who had just moved from Conference USA to the Sun Belt. Rice did some movement of their own in the American, and going into 2023, Luke was now slated to be the number one wideout. He ended up showing out, starting all 13 games for the Owls, catching 71 passes for 992 yards and 13 touchdowns. On the ground, he also ran for over 100 yards, and this time the Owls went 6-6 six and six and made the first Responders Bowl but lost to Texas State. After the season, he was named a first-team All-American Conference receiver and declared for the 2024 NFL Draft. Honestly, he was a name that started popping up a couple of months ago, and I never actually thought Luke McCaffrey would end up being a big deal. According to NFL Mock Database, he was a projected 5th round pick and the 138th best prospect in the draft. 
McCaffrey ended up going to the Combine, where he ended up running a 4.4640 and generally performed super well with all the other drills, very similar to his older brother. Given his ceiling and his family name, it was no surprise that he was starting to become a bigger name on draft boards, and eventually, he actually kind of shocked the world and went with the 100th overall pick in the third round to the Washington Commanders. I guess the Commanders saw enough in him to think that he was worthy of a pick that high, and he'll now have a chance to be paired up with their new superstar rookie quarterback, Jaden Daniels. This is a pretty big deal with him, and you'll also get a chance to play in an offensive system with Cliff Kingsbury, who likes to air it out. Former Commander Logan Paulson said, quote, after watching him over those first three days, you're like, man, this guy's going to be a great professional. He may not have the same ceiling as some of the other prospects in last year's draft, but his floor gives him such a tremendous confidence, and his ability to work and his passion is just so evident. The professionalism of his family is evident when you watch him, and he just gets it, and there's just so much value to that. There definitely will be some growing pains for Luke as he switched from a college quarterback to college receiver to now having to play at the NFL level. No offense, but the defensive backs are probably going to be a little bit better than they were at Rice, but he has athleticism, has a work ethic, and it seems like he's willing to do whatever it takes to win and to make his career work. At one point, Luke was a guy buried on the depth chart at Nebraska. He never really got a chance and turned the ball over, but instead ended up saving his career at Rice, switched to wide receiver, and now got to the NFL just like everyone expected. It's definitely a crazy story, but what do you guys think? If you're a fan of the Commanders, what do you think of Luke McCaffrey? How do you think he fits on the team? And which rookie should I cover next? Be sure to let me know down below, leave a like if you can support today's video, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon, and until next time, peace.